When you think of a landscape photographer, you'll probably picture someone stood at the top of the mountain, they've got the camera on the tripod, they're getting rewarded with lots of photos after hiking for hours. But this is not always the case. You can actually get some fantastic landscape photographs from the seat of your car. Obviously, you need to pay attention to your driving and not take photographs while you're moving. But if you don't block any of the roads and you don't do it on major highways or anything like that and find a sleepy road to do it on, you can actually stop, wind your window down, take some photographs. Oh, watch out, sheep. That's when you can get some fantastic photographs. Now, I've taken a lot of my landscape photos from sat right here in the car or at most 10 to 15 feet away from the car. And this means that if you have any mobility issues or you know, you're not that good at walking anymore or you've got a dodgy hip or a dodgy knee, you can still be a landscape photographer. Now today I'm at Craganan Lake in Mid Wales. It's a fantastic location for this. It's a very sleepy road. I'm always keeping an eye out to make sure I'm not blocking anyone off. And if you look for different locations like this, you can very easily find places where you can get some fantastic photographs, literally from sat in your car. It's 6.41, the sun has just risen, but because we're up in the mountains, the sunlight isn't on the landscape yet. I've got a fantastic lake here with a reflection and a nice craggy mountain in the background. So I'm gonna try and get a photograph of that. Now the only problem with getting photographs from your car is getting the right vantage point. Obviously if you can hike to different locations, you can get to exactly where you want, but you are limited to where the road goes. However, just got a spot here, which is absolutely fantastic. And hopefully I can get a nice reflection of that lake. See what we can get. Now this is where having a zoom is imperative. If you don't have a zoom lens and you have just quite wide lenses, it's really hard to single out parts of that landscape. So try and use something like the 70 to 200. I'm using my RX10 as usual. That has a 24 to 600 millimeter full frame range. So I've got a lot to play with. The main thing is to try and get the subject on the driver's side. So you're shooting out the driver's side window. Now we have got some geese making quite a lot of noise. But sometimes, they can add to the picture. So I'm putting them in the center at the bottom of this one. They kind of anchor the photograph. Now I've got this little bush down here in the foreground. That's kind of getting in the shot. So I'm just gonna pull forward a little bit just to get that out of the frame and to try and clean it up a little bit. Again, like I always say, with a telephoto lens, all I'm doing is just finding different things within the landscape, zooming in on it, isolating that subject or isolating what I want to photograph and getting some nice, clean shots of it. Now, it wouldn't be a proper photo shoot in Wales if I didn't get some photos of some sheep. she's staying as still as possible so I don't notice her or so she thinks I don't notice her. Now like I said you can shoot out of the front window but you've just got to watch for those reflections and bits of dirt on that window. Here we're really overlooking Barmouth 
We've got this bridge going across the estuary. Let's see if we can get a shot of that. The one downside to being on these really windy, narrow roads is that there aren't many places to turn around. So if you do have one kind of focal point or one thing that you want to photograph, this is when it can get quite tricky. Just hopefully I don't get stuck or hit the wall. Like with landscape photography in general, sometimes you can be traveling for ages and not find anything. So this is where planning comes into play again. I looked at this location, I saw the road went past the lake and this mountain in the distance, so I knew this would be a location to take photographs from the car. And there's a few vantage points around the lake. But if you are struggling, just keep driving, find those locations, and then basically find a safe place to pull over to take those photographs. Now you can do it, but it's a lot harder photographing outside of the passenger window. Let's see if I can get one now. You have to zoom in a lot more and your view is limited. Because you're really close to the driver's side window, you can kind of lean out a little bit to get your photographs. But on the passenger side, it is a lot harder. <laughs> Now, when I'm doing this type of landscape photography, I'll keep my cameras on the passenger seat and I'll put the seat belt around them just to hold them into place. This means that if you do have to stop suddenly, your cameras are quite safe. If you do have dodgy knees or dodgy hips or you struggle with your mobility, this is a really great way to still be able to practice landscape photography. The other reason that you might wanna do this is if you've been on a hike the day before and your energy levels are really low. This is when doing landscape photography from your car is great. And we do this all the time. We'll go on a massive hike, then the next day we'll be absolutely shot. And so on that second day, we'll jump in the car, I'll do a bit of research, find some locations that are great to take photographs from the car, and that's exactly what we'll do. And I might have to walk 10, 20 foot from the car, but most of the time I actually do take photographs from the driver's seat of the car. Obviously, safety is the first thing you need to take into account. You're not going to take any photographs while you're moving. You'll have the seatbelt around your cameras and you need to pull over if there's lots of traffic or just stop and keep an eye on the traffic if it's a really quiet road like the one I'm on today. But it is a great way to be able to get out, get some photographs of your own without burning too much energy. And especially, like I said, if you've got mobility issues. Now, it is even better if you can have someone else drive the car for you and then you can focus completely on the landscapes around you and not worry too much about the driving aspect of it. That's when it's perfect. And that's basically when you can boss the person around who's driving, get them to stop and take photographs, get them to move forwards or backwards to line up that photograph perfectly. But if not, you do the driving, you stop, take the photograph, move on to the next location. Ultimately, how you get the photograph doesn't really matter, as long as you're not harming anyone and as long as you're not getting in anyone's way. So if you've got access to a car, do a little bit of research, find the nice locations that you can drive to, and then go out and get some really nice photographs for yourself. <laughs>